Uh, hi, I'm Kale from the Technology Exploration Team. So I guess if you have paid attention to the banner on the Meetup uh, page and the Facebook group, our, one of our key topics today is this uh, Baroda's Map on iOS. So basically if you're a fan of Harry Potter, or if you've watched the movies or read the books before, you'll know that Harry Potter uses this uh, map to kind of track the movement of people around the Hogwarts school. Uh. So he uses it, he can see people, he can avoid people, he can track where they're going, etc. So basically, we tried to do the same thing. And Apple recently introduced something to do with indoor positioning that is built straight to call location that we can make use of today. Uh. So, um, in Harry Potter, she would say this line, uh, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good, to kind of activate the map. But for us, uh, I would probably want to say that we are not up to no good, but occasionally we would use the tracker for maybe not so good reasons. Lah. So one of the key, we basically released this app called Level 8. So if you don't know yet, this floor is basically, we kind of name it Level 8. Lah. It's kind of home to the Technology Transformation Group, which is headed by our CTO, who's like hiding at the back. Um, so we built a feature into the app that was kind of like a number one request. Can we track the boss? and see where he's going around the floor. So yeah, we built it, and then it was supposed to buzz us, like, hey, he's in the left wing, he's in the right wing. And then of course, maybe you can make, make, make it easier for you to find him. Or if you want, like maybe this guy over here, Tongs, who is basically one of the main coders on this project, he kind of uses it to avoid the boss, maybe. Like if you see him coming around the corner and you just run away. So of course, like, um, with all IT projects, right, there is kind of like a methodology that we try to follow. Maybe if you want to call it Lean Startup or whatever, we start with a very simple MVP. Uh. So, does anyone recognize what beacons these are? Estimals. Yeah, basically just Estimals. Uh. We bought a bunch of Estimals to play around with. And our MVP was quite simple. Basically, this is the kind of like the floor plan of level 8 that you're currently on. We basically just threw in three beacons, one left wing, one right wing, and one for this center entrance area that you guys are at. This is like, yeah, you can see the beacon over there is still there. We never took it out. So yeah, this is like a simple version, right? You come out of the lift, and your, your phone will hit region monitoring, you take this beacon, and it'll tell everyone else, it'll report the coordinates back to the server, like, and just say, oh, he's on entrance area, something like that. This is like a very simple version. Uh. But of course, this is the first level MVP, right? Then if you want to go one step higher, still using beacons, this is something that I would reference to Kaming stock in November, which he mentions this thing called beacon trilateration, where he uses multiple beacons to calculate the position of the user based on the distance he is away from from each different beacon. But using this method, right, uh, we can still get the position of the user, but it's not without issues, la, which Kaming also experienced during his talk. Like, interferences from external uh, signals, etc. So, one of the major issues with beacons, I would say, is the interferences, like Wi-Fi or Clash, even the lights could be emitting a frequency that's similar to Clash. Uh, human bodies, like in a room like this, you're probably block blocking that beacon from being detected very well already. Because each human body is really made out of a lot of water content, which is a blocker for the signal. And of course, like microwaves and such. And also, the other thing we can take note of is, for this floor, I only use three beacons, but if I'm doing the trilateration, I'll need a lot more beacons. And this is just one of this floor, right? If I was doing something larger, like an airport or a shopping mall, I could potentially be using beacons in a number of thousands, which is also harder for us to manage on a code level. Uh. So, I guess the logical assumption is, why not just use the Wi-Fi infrastructure that's already existing, right? which is exactly what uh, some of the big guys are, have been working on. Uh. So in WWDC 2014, so that's like three years ago already, they released this uh, session called Taking Call Location Indoors. So uh, essentially, right, what their technology uses is that the iPhone can detect the Wi-Fi signal strengths of the area around you, and also using it in conjunction with the motion sensor, it can detect your location within an indoor space. So yeah, that's basically our Marauder's Map version of this uh, app that we were building. Uh. So if you want to see like a live version, there are already certain sites that have been mapped and enabled with indoor positioning. So one example is like the Los Angeles airport. 
if you are ever dropping by the airport and you're at one of the terminals, if you open your Maps app, the Apple Maps app, you will see that your position now is uh, hyper accurate. It will be in the indoor positioning. Uh, accuracy is up to about two to five meters, depending on like interferences and such. But you will actually be able to navigate through the map. So what we want to do is we try to achieve that for our own positions, right? So to walk you through the process, it really starts with us having to collaborate with the maps team at Apple. Because the first thing we need to do is actually to create a map of this area, such that now every iOS device will be able to detect it over here. So how this starts off with, right, is basically you need to own the location first on the Maps Connect portal. Once you own the location, with a, as a verified owner, you'll be able to start uh, sharing a floor plan with Apple. The Maps team will be the one that can guide you through the requirements of what this uh, floor plan would require, but they will also tell you to pay attention to certain things like uh, the geometries of the space. So like even the angles of like, you see this uh, our floor, right? The angles, the corners, everything, all of it is reflected in our floor plan. Uh, other things that you'll pay attention to are like things like lift lobbies, staircases, etc. Because those are what transitions you from floor to floor. And you'll be providing floor plans for every floor that you're mapping into this system. Uh. Landmark fixtures as well, like if there's an object that is permanently there that people cannot walk through, then you should also add it to the floor plan. So once you actually have everything added in and you submit to them, they will actually do some form of cleanup, etc., and they'll return you a GeoJSON-based file that you can make use of when you're building your app. So this is uh, one of the examples of what we got. And yeah, it kind of details out the area. Lah. Then the next step is actually, right, you need to do this thing called an indoor survey. So it, it doesn't actually work automatically on its own. So you still need the ven, uh, venue owner to actually map the Wi-Fi signals across the entire floor plan using one of Apple's own apps. This app is not available on the App Store, so the Maps team will actually send you a link to download it once you are enrolled in the program. And they do give like some small best practices that we try to follow. So for example, we are supposed to use the same device for the surveys. Try not to switch between multiple devices because each device could have a slightly different uh, Wi-Fi strength, etc. So they try to maintain the same device for the full survey, but it would still work for different devices. Lah. Also, when you're doing the, the actual survey, we don't stay connected to the Wi-Fi network. We leave it disconnected but on, so it can still detect the Wi-Fi uh, signals around you. This is kind of how the indoor survey app looks. So yeah, basically, if you own many, many venues, like I guess if you're one of the property realtors, you probably own multiple venues with the account. And of course, for each venue, you can also see the number of levels that are available to you for uh, that have been submitted, like the floor plans. Then on the right is when we actually run the actual survey. And of course, what you're supposed to do is just select floor by floor, and then when you're doing the survey, we tend to do it in segment by segment uh, to do a full coverage of the entire area. So this is an example of the indoor survey in action. Yeah, it's already running. But yeah, basically the indoor survey app, right, you're supposed to walk the distance, and as you're walking, you're dragging this marker to mark the distance that you're covering. And this will kind of mark, demarcate the Wi-Fi signals for this portion of the floor. And now you're supposed to color the entire floor, all the areas that people will usually walk. So it can be quite a painful process to survey an entire floor, especially if you're talking about I don't know, uh, places that could be as big as like Vivo City, for example. There's a lot of walking that you have to do uh, to cover the entire area. Then each time one is done, right, then you can like maybe start the next main segment. So uh, they recommend not doing too many surveys per area, like try and walk as far as you can per survey, but also don't walk too much such that you end up having to redo the entire area if you make a mistake, for example. But yeah, this is basically the gist of the indoor survey app. And then once it's done, the surveys are submitted to Apple for approval. It takes a couple of days for them to check and verify that everything is accurate and, and usable. Then once all of that is done, right, technically, um, 
indoor position will already be enabled. So within that same indoor survey app, they have a third tab that would show you the floor plans that are submitted already embedded onto MapKit. And then with MapKit there, right, your user location pin is already there and you can already start walking around and see the movements within this floor plan space. So for us, the next step is, of course, to integrate it into our own app. Uh, um, I guess one thing to note is that the map will not automatically be released on the Apple Maps app, such that it will be public and everybody will access the floor plan. So this is usually up to them and their own agreements with the different uh, parties that are collaborating with them on this. Uh. So, for example, if you were like LAX, then you could be on the system. Then for other people, it will be subject to their own uh, discrepancies. Uh. Um, So if you're building it in the own app, right, it doesn't take a lot of coding for us to enable it. It's already built straight into call location. You don't have to do anything special to enable it. You just need to leave the Wi-Fi on, and call location will already automatically start tracking you in indoor if it is available. But the only thing that you do need to do is you have to change the accuracy to a best setting. So for like, I guess for most of us, if you're not doing like a navigation app, we try to we usually try to be a bit more. Uh, careful with this setting, uh, like we set it to maybe 100 meters, 1 km, depending on our usage. But for indoor positioning, you need it to be at the best setting, then it will be enabled. Then things like the floor that you're on and which level you're on, that is already included straight into the CL location object that you will get back from the delegate method. I can so, give the answer to that on home part. I wasn't talking to Siri, but never mind. Um, yeah. And if you wanted to do a uh, background tracking, it also works. So if you have your normal allow background updates turned off for call location, is indoor positioning will work as well. We've actually tested it out. So I guess the first iteration is actually to overlay it onto MapKit. This would be one of the easiest methods because MapKit already controls the user location the pin. So we don't actually have to manage it. If you actually open your Maps app now, you would already see your pin is roughly accurate, just that you wouldn't have a floor plan on the map that you can use as a point of reference to see where you are, but your pin itself should be accurate because it's already taking into uh, account from through, through your own device, the Wi-Fi settings and everything around here. Um, yeah, so what we want to do is we want to overlay the floor plan into MapKit such that we can see where we exactly are. So to do that, to do that right, the, it's not that simple because of the coordinate, the different coordinate systems. Latitude and longitude are based on this spherical model that uh, that's basically Earth, right? And our floor plans are generally flat 2D surfaces, so we have to kind of map them together. And it doesn't automatically map. Like if you try to stick a piece of paper onto a curved surface, there's some kind of distortion, right? It doesn't actually stick flat. So that's where the extra work for us comes in, uh, which half of that work has already been made easier by Apple through their own like uh, helper functions. Um, yeah, so the short version is they do like some form of mapping where you get two anchor points on basically two latitude longitude points that map to two points on the floor plan. So if your floor plan was like this number of pixels wide versus the Actual latitude longitude, of course, level our, our current one is not that high, that's just for uh, example. But yeah, you need a two anchor points, and also you need a scale, like the distance between these points. And we make use of this app called QGIS. So QGIS is, I think, a popular app that will be used for uh, editing and viewing GeoJSON files. So this app actually helped us to get the coordinates we need, uh, they're already embedded into the GeoJSON file that Apple would send us. It also gives us other information like the rotation, uh, the orientation of the map on the actual surface, as well as the like a skill that we can use. So for overlaying, right, um, rather than dive into the details, I would suggest you to watch the WWDC video as well as check out the sample app footprint provided by Apple. Most of it is detailed there and it's actually quite easy to understand. But in short, they make use of the, some of the key helper functions from, uh, in MapKit to calculate the map point for each coordinate, the distance between points, and 
the distances at each latitude because some of the distances do vary like as you get closer to the north or south pole, etc. And of course, uh, we need to apply some form of transformation of the orientation before we actually embed it onto MapKit. Because um, basically your floor plan when it comes to you, right, it's kind of straight, but on map, it could be orientated in any direction. Yeah, so if you do all that, you can get to this, I would call it our second iteration, which is basically using MapKit with our uh, map now overlaid onto it. So okay, now it comes to our third version where we actually try to do it within our app. Because basically we're not using MapKit, right? Our app is a little bit special. It tries to mimic the exact floor plan that we currently have. And each of our desks are an interactive object by itself. They have a state, they can have tappable, etc. So um, in our scenario, right, we're using a UI scroll view. So we can't exactly make use of the MapKit version. We don't really want to overlay this entire chunk of UI scroll view with all these individual views of like maybe over 100 desks onto MapKit. It wouldn't make sense. So what we want to do instead is reverse the process. We want to take that user location data and then convert that data and put it into our view instead. So yeah, basically, I will tell you that the entire Marauders map is based on just this one function that takes in a latitude, longitude coordinate, which is the user location, and turns it into something usable within our UI view from, for our app. Um, yeah, this is really long and you probably can't see anything, but I can, most of the code is actually based off Apple sample app. And I can walk you through the basic five steps that we did. Basically, the two anchor points are set, we map them to the two anchor points on our floor plan. We get the user location in reference to these two anchor points. And then we transform, we transform everything, basically rotating everything, such that the x-axis of our display, of the UI view, and the y-axis map the north and east of the actual map. But we are doing all this just to convert this user location into a CG point that we can actually make use of within our own app. Which, here you will have it. Um, you can kind of see it in action. Uh. So this was taken just earlier today, actually, where you can actually just walk by, and then you'll see the pin moving very clearly. If you want to see a closer demo of this, you can look for either Tongs or myself. We both have the apps on our phones. Then we can actually show it to you, like, how it actually looks like in person. But yeah, uh, you'll notice the seating arrangement is not the same as current one, but yeah. So, um, I guess there's some caveats to this. It's not so straightforward. So, the first one, I guess, uh, if you are someone who has used call location quite often, you would already figure out that battery usage is super intensive at the moment. So, I would say this has been designed at the start for more short-term wayfinding kind of scenarios. Like, if you're at the airport and you're just getting to the gate, you're looking for directions on how to get to the gate, it would make sense. You'll leave it on for like the five or ten minutes that you're walking, and then that's it. But if you want to leave it on for long-term tracking, like what we were trying, what we were trying to do, uh, it could get quite bad. Like we used up uh, basically 82% of our battery life, and we didn't even have it on for a good two hours even. It was a lot less than that. So for now, this is still mostly only feasible as a short-term thing, short-term usage thing. So I guess our next step is, could we actually combine this with the beacons that we want to, that we already have, like this thing? So we have been like uh, contemplating like uh, maybe we can use the beacons to trigger it on or off, etc. Or use some combination of both. Like beacons could be telling you the radius is like 50 meters. And then if you switch down your eye objective, it can drop down to the accuracy of 5 meters. So maybe some logical combination of both. And with that, actually, we got our mischief managed. And yeah, that's our Marauders map. Uh, very short introduction to indoor positioning. If you have any questions? How long do you take to do all this uh, mapping and all that? How long do you take? Wow. Uh, because of the need for us to collaborate with the maps team, there will be some waiting time uh, for us. Like, say, okay, I would say that I think the first issue is a lot of buildings, or rather, some buildings uh, may not even have up to date floor plans. So, that could be your first hurdle that could take a while for you to update your floor plan before you can actually submit it. 
Apple's end doesn't take very long. Usually, it's just a couple working days each time. Then, for us, once you get that updated floor plan, right, the JoJSON file, you can actually do the rest of the development quite quickly. Because most of the sample code is already there, there wasn't a lot of details that we needed to work through for that portion. Uh. The bulk of the work is from the getting the floor plan and doing the actual survey. So doing the actual survey, I would say anywhere between one to one day to up to a week or more for even just a floor like this, mostly just to iron out any problems or to redo surveys if you find that it's not as accurate. Uh. Um, the advertised accuracy is up to 5 meters. So you'll still see that it's slightly off sometimes, but most of the time it's okay, lah, generally acceptable. If, you can, if your location doesn't require as much details as ours, right, the recommendation is to zoom up further so that it looks more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually the recommendation. If you don't need that up to 1, 2 meters, if you zoom up to about 5, 10 meters, no one will notice. Lah. It'll look very accurate already. And if you think about a larger scenario like maybe airport or mall, shopping mall, most units would be more than the distance apart anyway. Would you request this access from Apple? Is there like a particular function on Apple's website for you to, to submit the kind of request? You would have to contact them. Directly. Yeah. Oh. The maps team. Uh. Well, imagine that this service is too often, right? If I say the Wi-Fi situation change, people install more or less routers. If it's just one access point changing, right? The advertised, the advertised scenario is you don't have to redo the survey. But yeah, if there are massive changes in the Wi-Fi infrastructure of the location, you do have to do a completely different survey to remap the entire place. You just submit one level. Uh, we submitted more than one, uh, but we only mapped one level for our app because we weren't really doing anything else uh, for the other levels here. Then, then do you try multi-level uh, tracking? Yeah, it worked. Oh, okay. It actually worked. Okay. The question here is that, have you actually thought about uh, mapping all these APs, MAC address, to mitigate the battery issues? 80% is quite unacceptable. <laughs> That portion, right, is invisible to us at the moment. Uh, his question was whether we can do our own mapping of like the MAC addresses of the APs and such. But the entire portion is invisible to us because this is built directly into call location. Oh, right. So your maps are submitted to Apple. Your indoor surveys that you complete are also submitted to Apple. And now any iOS device that comes here would have access to that yeah. indoor positioning. So it's actually not from our end. It's, we can't really do that. Yeah, I guess you could if you are hacking into the point where you're building your own version. <laughs> I, uh, I, mean, I mean, things that once you connect it to the AP, you will get the home beacon. Technically, yeah, the yeah. Um, There's a way to get it. <laughs> um, yeah. For Matt, does it work on Google Maps? Your pin technically should be accurate because it still uses call location, but I don't think the net you submit to Apple will be in Google's database. How does that Yeah, so I was mentioning earlier, right? It's already built into the call, the call location object, the CL location. It has a, another object called CL floor. So I think it uses altitude, but it saves the altitude as part of your surveying during the surveys as well. So now when you come in from our end, we just need to receive it in uh, the update locations, and we can already detect which floor you're on. So for our case, we can already like, just switch the floor that we are displaying uh, accordingly. So when you switch the floor, your, does your current location is it? That's up to our app coding. If it's our own app, it's up to us. But for Mac it will just be there. It will always be there. It just depends on what overlay you're showing. For our app, we'll just maintain the pin and just switch the floor. We try to cover the entire area so that when you actually walk, you can see everything. Uh. But there are certain uh, best practices that they will try to tell you. Uh. So if you walk very messily, right, they'll probably tell you to redo the survey. Like if you are not walking, they try to basically just walk in a very systematic fashion to cover the areas. But if it's of course a path that nobody walks, then it doesn't really matter too much. Uh. Like there's like some corner that no one comes to at all. In a big open space like airports, for example, is it possible just to go to key points and on the map itself is an open 
the space, or do you actually have to go think that all the way until so that it's I think for us, what we would do is we cover the border, the perimeter first, then we work on the inside portions. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a rule to not cut across totally, right? Yeah. So actually, we do avoid the zigzagging. Any other questions? Do you guys manage to track multiple users like your boss? <laughs> uh, we have tested it out non issue lah, because basically we just ping it back to our server and save the coordinate, and then now we can display on another device now. So non issue, we can track it as well. Right now, I think in the, our staging tool is just me and this phone though. <laughs> yeah. Can you try like embedding and stuff? Eh? Hmm? Oh, like secretly? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we shall do that. <laughs> so much power but okay I would say the first difference is right the beacons that we use work in the background very seamlessly because it's just region monitoring you can leave it running in the background it doesn't take a lot of power and then most of the time it will ping you successfully once you enter the area la. but for this one right it eats a lot of power and right now we've been testing it yeah like you saw like 82% la. so but the accuracy is also a different question because this one it just tells you that you're in this general area, it cannot tell you exactly which part of the area you're at if you're only just using one beacon. Versus the Wi-Fi based one, it tells you right to the within two to five meters that you're actually walking, maybe you're walking to the end of the wing, you're walking back, it tracks you all the way. I'm thinking of an application, let's say in a construction site where uh, we don't have a big um, routers deployed yet, but you're trying to map certain features of <coughs> Hmm. Um, the alternative, I guess, is something you can try with SDMode. SDMode has another solution which uses beacons, but they basically put one on every wall. Every change in wall, like if the wall tilts again, you put one more, wall changes again. Every side of every surface, they put one beacon. And then somehow they try to do that um, positioning, <laughs> but I think it's subject to the same amount of interferences, so still a bit, you know. If you're going to install that many beacons, actually, you may as well just install the Wi-Fi. It's probably easier, because you don't need that many APs. It's just, if you have only one AP, then it's just one AP. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Last question. <laughs> hey, um, so, can you just repeat again, what's your use case for this? <laughs> <laughs> Our current use case, uh, is, uh, it's called CTO tracker. What's the real world use case? I think the real world use case right now, uh, um, of course the main use case is wayfinding. Uh, yeah. For visitors who are going to airports, etc., it's easier for them to find their location, uh, find out how to go. Airports mostly because if you have problems finding where to go for your gate, etc., it's easy. Uh, find retail shops in a huge mall, etc. But on the other side, if you can actually corner the track, the I would say tracking the background, because maybe that might not be so open to public users all the time. But if we can do some form of that, right, it will be very nice for analytics purposes, uh, as like a heat map of users within our floor space of a mall or airport. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to ask, whether is there any plans for the, the stakeholder instead of the user, because let's say in Suntec City, you have IT show which is coming up next week. How does the organizer track the manpower workflow? Whether as a cleaner you go and clean the toilet because there's a lot of people there. I guess that's a good question, but also <laughs> that's the next thing that we can start working on to see how we can do that. But now actually they already use RFID data. Is a back right? They stick behind. There's a sticker. That one's not RFID. That's if you have visitor badges. We're yeah. looking at a scenario where there are none of these things, then all you have is the devices that belong to the visitors themselves. Because in any one time, there's like 10,000 people at some time. 
you yeah. are issues to treat them. Yeah. So the human is dead. You can't even call. <laughs> Uh, cool, any other questions? So, just about the income positioning thing, I'm just wondering what places in Singapore actually have We don't really. I mean, okay, on the other side of the coin, is uh, the tourism board working? I'll say we are working with some. We are working with some. Uh, but uh, officially, Apple has not released us publicly yet uh, for Singapore. To my knowledge, no. Not yet. If you go there and you see on your Maps app, and the pin looks very, very accurate for some reason, it's probably been surveyed. But there wouldn't be a public like, floor plan on the app yet uh, that you can actually look at. Any other questions? That you can try Apple Store. <laughs> that's that's highly likely. <laughs> he mentioned try Apple Store if you want to try it out. The one help you. Yeah. If you not, not really. No. But do you work with uh, Sports Hub? Because they have been talking about this since uh, quite some time. Okay. Um, if nothing else, I'll hand over to the next speaker.